That was a great little thing you said, right? Before. Oh, now we're live. Now we're live, right in the middle of your great little thing. I'm just, I told them we needed to say something, so it felt like you just missed out on something. And <laughs> I purposely kept the creepy chair, the creepy, the creaky chair. Creaky. Creaky chair. Because we're at my, I'm at my venue, you're at yours. What are we doing today, Scott? Ardbeg Kelpie Committee Release. Boy. We better wait a few minutes and let some people get in here with us. All right, we're gonna let them in. Take a look at that. Do your normal chit chatty stuff and uh, chatty well, Kathy stuff. Chatty Kathy, I brought back the gardening hat uh, for a spring theme. That's what, what I'm. You were, you've been doing some yard work today. I am. You know how uh, you got the uh, the uh, the grass that you got a the decorative grass oh. you've got to cut back. In the spring, yes. So uh, we were behind schedule on that. There were green shoots coming up, coming up, but we know that'll stunt the growth. So my wife and I had arranged to go out and cut all those decorative grasses. Uh, I saw someone the other day had a real good idea. What's they, that? Because it's the tall stuff that grows really fast, right? Yes. And they took duct tape and they wrapped it around the outside so it was in a bundle, and then they just cut right underneath it. That is smart. I usually go out and grab, I got some like twine and I'll uh, wrap that twine around it and tie it off. And then when you cut it, it stays in a bundle. I've been wondering if that would be good kindling. Oh, I'm sure it would. You, think? you don't think it'd just smoke real bad? Uh, real quick. All right. We've already got several people with us. But, uh, Bobby Childs. He says that uh, he should open his bottle to taste along with us, and I, I agree. I think he should. Of course. Yeah, that's one of the most fun things you can do. Uh, nope. Food, Food Quig is with us. Jerry Bartlett is with us. Or These are people that are commenting anyway. Deep Eye Oi. Uh, Amy Holland Woody is here. I don't know about the husband. Oh. Oh, and Triple Cap is with us, and this sample is courtesy of Triple Cap. Go Triple Cap. You bet, and thank you very much. In an, uh, I say tongue in cheek because he has cost us a lot of money. In a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful way. <laughs> Triple Cap has been responsible for the Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release. Thank you. And the Octomore Six Point Three. Oh my God, those were like phenomenal. So I'm I'm very curious on this because uh, depending on how this tasting goes is how how rabid I will be in the seeking out of the committee release bottle. I agree. Now we got enough people with us now. So yeah, we got the Ardbeg, uh, I about said Dark Cove, Ardbeg Kelpie committee release. Yes. That we're going to look at today. Bart, what are we going to do? We're going to test it. We're going to test it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pour and uh triple cap. These are very healthy samples that you sent yes. us. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, Sam, Sam Spears has joined us. George yeah. Kaplan. Yeah, Jersey in the house. I know uh, George had said on Twitter that he's got some guests coming and he hopes they're late because of our show. Ooh. Late guests. That's good. Uh, Raster is with us. Scott Monroe. Wow. The one glass man. You people, Jerry Bartlett. Oh, Amy's husband is with us also. Woo! Doubling down. Uh, coin 207. 207. I'm wearing my uh, spring gardening hat. That's why we we're talking about how to cut decorative grasses. Make sure you throw in decorative in there. You don't want to just be saying how to cut grass. Well, I'd like to say um, we had Trini and C on two weeks ago, and we didn't really have anything planned today. Uh, Bart and I are on a parade committee here in town, uh, and that parade has grown a little bit each year. This was our third year of doing it. Yep. That parade was yesterday, and so the last couple of weeks has been pretty busy for Bart and I, and we haven't we didn't plan anything because we didn't know. Um, what today was going to be like, but we were all done. It was wrapped up and we said, uh, Walt had sent us this Ardbeg Kelpie and we said, let's do it. That's right. I got a little shout out to, uh, cousin Shane. He's in a band called Crossfire. If you ever get a chance. And because we're on the parade committee, 
guess what band got to play for a couple hours during the after parade block party? That's right. Crossfire. They did a great job too. Yeah, they rocked. That was awesome. So there's a couple shout outs. So I see you got your coin capping off the Kelpie. I've nosed in once already. Why don't you grab in there, see what you get on your first burst. Sea salt. Smoke. There's nice citrus sweetness in there underlaying it. Yes, yes. I get a uh, I get a citrus kind of first. I do get a little bit of that uh, lovely brininess that's wrapped right around, kind of right around the, um, oh, shoot, a little bit of that Band-Aid smell or um, iodine. Just a hint of that in there. But, yeah, the citrus is kind of what I'm getting most at this point. Let me point. do, uh, Bart, like I talked, let's do a screen share right quick. And I want to show everybody the picture we got of the labels of this from Walt. Mm. And I should be in there. Hopefully you guys are seeing this now. Oops. That's not what I want to do. Uh, here's the front label of the Ardbeg Kelpie committee release 2017. Looks like it's coming in at 51.7% ABV from the front label. It's non-chill filtered uh, virgin casks made from Oak grown felled and seasoned by the black sea have produced an ardbeg aromatic with oily peat dark chocolate and smoked fish waves of flavor incredibly deep that's from the front label uh the back label over the seas to create ardbeg kelpie came virgin casks crafted from oak grown on land in the adig republic leading down to the Black Sea coast, renowned for imparting an incredibly deep flavor. Notes, only a handful of whiskeys have ever been produced using this kind of cask. Herbal aromas tantalize the nose, go deeper and discover smoky fudge, hickory wood, seaweed, and smoked fish. A depth reeling of its ties to the black sea the journey of its casks across the oceans and the waves of flavor they have created and that's all it said grown on land that was that's a good little tidbit yeah <laughs> i know i know it's land on and then i can't remember the name of it but i thought they could have dropped like grown on land get rid of the land part and just say where it was but i get it i get it now see Waves and layers of flavor is what I'm hoping for here. I mean, the nose isn't quite as peaty as I thought it might be, which was what uh, the, the first thing I found intriguing was what wasn't there. And that's fine. I still get hints of peat. You just know what I'm talking about. It's not like a peat that's climbing out of the Glen Cairn on that. Would you agree? Well, yeah, I agree. And the other stuff that it mentions, like the smoked fish, I'm not really getting any smoked fish. To me, it's kind of a standard nose so far. You know, there's, there's some peat, there's some sea salt, there's some brine, a little that's bit of tar. That citrus is a little surprising. Yeah, I think I think a, a little water may open this up on the nose, but I'm going to do that later after I taste. Huh. I thought too. I thought the 51.7 was a little light for the committee release. I think I thought most of them were coming in 56, 58 percent. Hmm. I'm tasting. Now this has been open, I'm sure, from uh, from Walt. We just poured our samples, um, so they're still airing a little bit. It does have. I mean, the nose is pleasant, though it is good. I don't notice too much different on the nose uh, with this release than just kind of a standard Ardbeg. Wow, you got to jump in on the flavor here. I'm curious to see what you think. I don't want to jump in your nose. Go, or go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go in for a taste. Hmm. All right. Um, it was like uh, I get a hint. I'm going to have to come in on this multiple times because I get a hint of the creosote. And then it moved right into a dark, dark, dark chocolate. Um, kind of that dry, uh, I forget the ranking, but I, I had a, what it was, a 90%, one of those cocoa bars. 
um, without the bitterness. So, uh, but it, but that dry, dark chocolatiness, no better. Um, and why don't you go back in, Bruno? Because I got to dive in. There are multiple layers here. I'm going to be spending some more money. <laughs> I can tell you that up right up front. Uh, initially, the first thing that hit my palate was sea salt, just a, an ocean salt water. Very strong, I thought, in it. And then that's, and then I did get a smoked fish, and I think that's in there as well. Next up. I do like the dark char chocolate or even the cocoa like you bring up, though. It's more of a dry uh, powder type cocoa. You know, on the forefront, I get a very, very interesting cinnamon flavor, like um, like a strong cinnamon stick or a, even a little bit of like the cinnamon I will get off of some gold schlock which is interesting. And, and it's only there for a little bit. And then that's when it starts to transition into some of those, some of those chocolate notes. Let me see if I can get something on the finish. If you want to jump in. Uh, someone asked, how does this compare to the Oogie referring to the Oogie doll? Um, I'm not sure now it's been a while since I've had the Oogie. Um, so I, I don't know without going side by side. Yeah, we would. Oh, we know. Nice ashiness uh, just came in. All we really know is when we did the three-bottle shootout between the regular Hard Break 10, the Corey Vrecken, and the Oogie, the Oogie definitely won out on those. So. Uh, yeah, and but there's a little bit of sherry casking in the Ooga doll as well, and there isn't with this one. I get a nice, almost like a, an ashy powder dryness, a stringent, astringency with it. And I'm going to add a little bit of water now. All right. Yeah, I'm still getting the cinnamon on the forefront. And I see what you're saying where it transitioned in. I don't, I don't know if I necessarily get smoked fish, but I definitely get a smoky, like a fire smoke. Not as much of a, of a heavy peated smoke. It feels more like something right off of a campfire. Yeah. And I'd say smoked salmon. Yeah, maybe a little bit. And then that's when, again, the, the drier cocoa chocolate comes in. And then the finish is a little bit more of a brown sugar peat. So I get that brown sugar sweetness around the gum and the peat just kind of lingering in the background. Again, not uh, this is not a super powerful peaty version for me, which is fine. I tell you, it feels like the peatiness or the smokiness of it is coating my teeth. Right. I sit here and it's like I'm licking or sucking it right off of my teeth because it's mm -hmm. penetrated in the uh, uh, outer layer of my teeth. Wow. And then, yeah, I definitely get like um, an oiliness maybe along. Uh, that's why I was saying along my gum line almost the way it kind of clings in there. So the color is interesting. I, I mean, I know it, it's not everything, but it's got a little bit of a, uh, of a lemon gold to it. You can kind of see it in camera there. A little bit of that amber hue that kind of comes off as it rolls around. But it's got a nice clearness to it. How old is this? Is uh, in, NAS. Okay. Which, uh, let's see, we had a comment up here. Somebody is tired of the NAS releases. There it is, the one glass man. Huh. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I like to see an age statement. Um, you know, if what's in the bottle is good, though, you know, the Dark Cove was an NAS. Uh, delicious. This is delicious as well. Gra I just got a nice grassiness or a maltiness on the nose. Yeah, I can pick up a little bit of maltiness back on the flavor as I go in as well. Hmm. Uh, Triple Cap did say let it sit for a bit. I'll try to try to do that. George Kaplan wants to know if it's crumbly brown sugar. <laughs> it's not clumpy. It's not crumbly. It's more like the brown sugar that's sat in your mouth and you've let it melt, and the 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 sugar the sugar liquid is rolling around in there a little bit. I'm capped mine. I've got it capped off. Got a little bit of water added in. 
We're going to see if that changes the nose at all. I got a little, I got a little water at it. I'm going to leave my cap off. Just let it get some oxygen, breathe for a little bit. I'm done on the nose. Well, I don't think adding the water has changed the nose much at all for me. I'm not getting anything more out of it. Again, a little bit of that lemon and uh, that lemon grassiness. Nothing much additional. I'm still getting a little bit of that like band-aid adhesive kind of uh, tucked in there. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Antiseptic. Right. Yeah, maybe, a little bit. Maybe, of the that's, maybe that's the iodine. Yeah, that's an iodine type smell there. So the water hasn't changed the nose much for me at all. I'm curious. And Claire the third wants to know if this is better than the dark cove. So far for me, no, it is not. The Dark Cove grabbed me right away and transitioned multiple, multiple times. And, and it seemed a little bit more complex to me. I mean, it was a must buy. I remember just being astounded by the Dark Cove committee release. This is good. I would agree. Um, I remember the Dark Cove being a little bit darker, a little bit richer. Um, of course, I believe there was some sherry caskings uh, in that one. I would this say... This one, no. So this one, really standard C, P, smokiness, brininess. Yeah, brininess. The cinnamon in there still kind of throws me for a loop. I didn't expect it. It's pleasant. It's not bad. Um, and then you like, I don't get any cinnamon at all with it. Wow. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I get it right on the forefront. And then you're right. I do get. A little bit of a, a almost. Have you had those little dry, like like seaweed flakes or those little sheets that they dry out? Have you had those before? Not by themselves, I don't believe. Yeah, somebody had those in like a little package they got from a store once, where you could kind of just float them in on your palate, and it's almost like a little, almost like a tissue paper thin. Yeah, I mean they use it in sushi and they're in the rice rolls and stuff sometimes. Right. This is a, a dry product that somebody gave me once, and it has oh. just a hint of that. Um, huh. Interesting. I'm going to let it sit a little bit longer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drain that one, but I'm going to let it sit a little bit since i got some water in it before I put the rest of the Kelpie in. So... I do like it. It's a different kind of flavor. Um, I'm going to agree with you. I wish that ABV was just a little bit higher. Um, but maybe it would have drowned out some of the subtleties, so I'm not going to say that it should have been higher. Um, but on the, uh, on the finish, it comes to me a little bit light. I feel like it's a little bit light in the finish. I would say I just took my coin off to nose it, and I did just get some note that was not there before, and I don't know what it was. It went. I mean, I had it, and I was like, wow, what was that? And then it was gone, so I'll see if I can pick it up again. Huh. Uh, one comment came in, and uh, Andreas, or Andreas Jensen uh, says, evening from Denmark, good time slot for the live stream for, for me. Very yes. Uh, we know the afternoon time slot works for most of our international or people across the pond from us. Um, the evening time slot works, especially if we've got guests in the States or on the West Coast. And we try to accommodate everybody. We know it had been a while since we had an afternoon stream. So that's why we decided to do this one in the afternoon as well. You know what? We need to do like a, a 10 o'clock or 9 a.m. A.m.? Yeah, we can try that. I don't know, though. I'm usually off at church. I'd probably be like a double sin. <laughs> I would miss, and, I would, and I'd and i probably get the stink eye from the wife. <laughs> the stink eye? Oh, yeah. She'd just be eyeing me like, what are you doing? I'd be like, got to miss church so I can drink some whiskey with people all around the world. And she'd be like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Claire the Third is asking how much our coin number 200 went for. Um, it's still up on eBay that, that we used the coin number 200 uh, yep. during our 300th review, which was of the Middleton Barry Crockett edition. And we put it on eBay just to kind of see what it would go for. Of course, all the proceeds will go to help us. And 
maybe it'll even buy a bottle. Now, I would like to say it's exceeding my expectations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually thought it would probably end up around $35. Where is it at? Like $62? $62 currently. Yeah, and I thought the same. I thought maybe we'll get $20, $30 out of it. Yeah. So that's great, though. Yeah, no, that was neat how that went. Uh, you, That was an idea you had. I wasn't even sure how well that would work. And then for the first time, we signed it or initialed it. So we did it with a little silver Sharpie on the black side. I got my old coin and my pocket coin, 57, my 57 Chevy. I keep them <laughs> in my pocket. I got two that I keep in my pocket. One's in my, uh, let's just say my office suit, we'll call it that. And that is 111. I call it my F111. And the one that's usually uh, in my uh, my shorts or my jeans or whatever is usually my 57 Chevy. I'm a double coin carrier, baby. So we are working on cast too, but uh, there's some production slowdowns. We may we're, we're maybe even looking at a different company to fulfill. I think we're gonna have to. Yeah, we may. We're we're kind of getting like uh, no responses back on on uh, customer service communication. I'll just say that mm. triple cap. Triple Cat points out that uh, we were kind enough to arrange for him to get some samples of the Barry Crockett Middleton edition. And Triple Cat, that's because you've uh, been more than accommodating to us. Oh, yeah, oh, you've sent us some home runs. Wow. And then, uh, like I said, I do like this. Um, All right. I got to interrupt you real quick. Good comment just came in from Whiskey Wings. Oh. He wants to know when your hat is going on eBay. Bam. I don't know if I'll ever let this gym go right here. <laughs> this is a gym right here, man, because this all started with we needed better wardrobe. What? Is there another comment came in? Nope. There? Nope. Just keep going. I want to hear. I want to hear this. Yeah, we needed better wardrobe or let's just say unique wardrobe. So where do you go for unique T-shirts? Where do you go, Scott? Where do you go? Goodwill. Goodwill, because we popped in there and like started hitting gold. I mean, right off the bat, the stuff that people trade in or purchased. And then we were in there. I think you held this up and said, why don't you get this? And I was like, bam, that's in the cart. <laughs> you were I like, did, was that from the, I thought you had that when you were doing your board game reviews. Uh -uh. Nope. I've used it in board game reviews, but no, this was sitting on the, huh. this was like sitting on, on a hook. And you were like, how about this? And I threw it on and it actually fit. And I said, you know what? It's got a little bit of whimsy to it, a little bit of visual whimsy. And uh, boom, the free cat was born. And uh, I hadn't broken out in a while. I've been, you know, I've, I've been wearing a little bit better hats, but this one just uh, screamed out spring. <laughs> That's what it screamed out. So I do like the idea of hats. I think hats are coming back. Maybe not this style, but I think hats in general are going to be huge. Huge. You know what I don't think is coming back? All those like overly manicured mustaches from the 1860s. Eh, some people have tried. Yeah, that would, that's going to be something that happens in like the year 2030 maybe. They're not back yet. But I see 2030 people are going to have a lot of free time. Due to robotics, <laughs> <laughs> now, I think we could, uh, if it was say ten years from now, when we're big and famous and a household name, we, <laughs> maybe your hat will go on. Maybe your hat will go on eBay then. Yeah, yeah. Back when, back when we're we'll, we'll be ten years older by then, and we'll be a household name. Boom. What what is your quote in the back? By the way, I know you got your quote, and I can't. Uh, no one's picked it up yet. We'll see. All right. I'll, I'll leave it. And what's your shirt yeah, said? I, I did. De smoke. I definitely got, I went back into this for a little bit and I definitely got a smoked meat in there. Hmm. And this, it didn't, this time it didn't necessarily seem like a, a smoked salmon. It almost more like a smoked ham. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I definitely see that. There's that smoky flavor that uh, I, I can get that. It's a, like a, a smoked meat. You're right yeah. on Sorry, my vest is off. Ooh. So, got a bottle of wow sitting right there, brother. 
Uh, by the way, uh, Lloyd Fink, um, I don't know if he's been here the whole time. He just started, or just saw his first comment from him. That is the beard. And in two weeks uh, from today, we are planning on a live stream with Bubba and the beard. Bubba and the beard. Boom. We're still, trying to, we're still trying to arrange what we're going to have, but uh, we'll get that worked out. And what time? Probably, are we looking at afternoon or evening with them? I did see that in a DM, though. They said it's our show we pick. Didn't you see that? Did, did they say they're buying? Oh, no, I don't think they said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they did. Oh, they did? No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did. Sorry. On, help, help me out here. Yeah, I was late on the uptake. Yeah, the yeah. Bubba pulled the beard. It's the dummy show. We are buying. Boom. That's what I read. What do you got in these silver cans behind you? What is that, Glenn Goyne? My focus. Your oh, focus. let's talk. Uh, let, we're going to let this still sit for a bit, but let's look at. Oh, um, yeah. Look at that. And uh, I haven't seen Ju Kim commenting yet, but our uh, he was one with us. Uh, the Black Art 5.1 just came yesterday. Uh, Ju Kim got his about a week ago, I believe. But we will do a special show for that one. Yeah, and I want to thank our uh, Patreon supporters because of uh, the support we've received from Patreon. We were actually able to afford that. So thank you to the Patreon supporters for helping to, helping to help us out. That's gotta, right. That's got to go on the front burner, obviously. we got to get uh, that one. Have you tasted it yet? No. Oh. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> half, half the bottle's gone. <laughs> oh, fighting words, brother. <laughs> So, no, no, that, that's cool. That is very cool. We got to get that one in. I also yeah, want to say nobody, what? nobody's, nobody's commented on the movie yet that that's from. All right, we'll hold that a little bit longer. I got a little teaser. I won't put it all out, but I will tell you a distillery. We're not going to say who yet. They have agreed to. They wanted to be part of our free contest giveaways, and uh, again, not releasing the name yet, but look for it soon. Two different shows they wanted to do a giveaway on, and it's going to be a full bottle of whiskey. It is uh, it is Scottish. It is going to be Scotch whiskey. I will tell you that. And uh, and I told them what are the they're going to handle all that. Obviously, we don't touch the alcohol or anything like that. They've got their own routes of distribution, but they said worldwide, dummies, worldwide. They said, whatever the laws are, where we're sending it, we'll follow. It'll maybe a 700 milliliter if it's going outside the U.S., but they said it'll be a 750 milliliter in the U.S., and they will handle everything on their end. So make sure you guys stay tuned to find out who's going to be doing some free giveaway stuff with the dummies. Bottles. Full bottles. That's a hell of a tease right there you just did. Uh, yeah. That's right. So they're uh, anyway. You said uh, they're going to give away two different bottles of their of their scotch, uh, yep. and we'll do so. We'll do like one episode. We'll do a little promo announcement and stuff for it. We'll give everybody a week to register. Mm. Yeah, I mean, what are you thinking? Yeah, we'll do it just like a normal show. You got to comment. You got to put a comment in the uh, comment section of that show where we announce it, and. Uh, and then uh, we'll we'll give it a week just because we know some people, you know, some people, we get a lot of people that view in over the week. We can tell after a week, we we will still get constant views, but they're, they're, they drop way off after the first week. So I think one week is a good one. You got to be a subscriber and then you got to post a comment uh, that you want to be in on the free giveaway. So then we'll just do a random drawing uh, and then that distillery is going to arrange for the shipment of that said bottle. Yep, yep. Um, I was told by their rep, whoever uh, whoever wins the free giveaway, we just give we contact them, get their address, get their information, and they will handle everything from there out. So again, that's not on this show. That'll be on a future show. We're going to do it on a pre-recorded show, um, so we can set it up in that fashion, and uh, and it won't be while we're tasting their their bottle either. Um, they just said, hey, we want to jump in next time you guys want to do a free giveaway. With, um, and I was like, oh, yeah. 
definitely. So that's a nice little deal for for our viewers there. What else you got? You well, some, some comments come in. I'll tell you, it's not a real high dollar bottle, but it is a good bottle. Right. Yeah. Neither of them are real. Uh, real. It's not high end. It's it's more of what I will tease out that it's kind of their entry level uh, bottles for their distillery is what I will say. And, uh, but you know, that's still a heck of a giveaway, man. I was blown away. So I was like, Hey, you guys got any promotional glassware or hats? <laughs> and they were like, we'll go one better. I was like, get jump back. Ooh, you're having a moment there. I feel like I'm inter interluding here. Yeah. Well, just back, just back to the art bag Kelpie. And I'll tell you, it's not, it's not incredibly complex. It's very, uh, just going back in, Still, though, a very salty, very smoky, very briny, very deep, very rich. But now some of that, I'm looking for my citrus notes to see what that is. Only on the nose. Yeah, and it's hard to tell us uh, what is causing, if anything, what sweetness is in there. I'm with you that there's a, there's a warmth, there's an earthiness. Um. The, the flavors, I, 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 it sounds weird, but you're right. The deepness of the flavors is a good way of describing it. I don't know if that hits it enough, but it feels like, like there's a depth to the flavor. The finish is fairly short for me, and it's, uh, it kind of really drops off at about the 20-second mark. I can do some of my little inhalation trick. 20 seconds, you got that down. Yeah. Yeah, that's timed it. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a, it, it comes in very rich, very full. It saturates your taste buds. And it's there, yeah, 10, 15, 20 seconds. And then it just it drops down. And I've still got a nice residual in my mouth. It's a good taste. It's still present. It's just not real, real heavy or real strong. Right. Hmm. Have you seen this locally anywhere? I have not. No, huh? and, and we never saw the Ard Bay, the Dark Cove uh, locally either. We had to source that from other parts of the states. Right. Yep. Um, I don't even think we've ever seen the non-committee release Dark Cove anywhere. Have you seen that? No. Uh. -uh. No. Yeah. Um, although the Whiskey Scout did find that last bottle for you in the Kansas City area. Uh, for right. those tuning in, we're in Wichita, Kansas City's what 220 miles yeah roughly somewhere in there from us uh you know it's about a, a two and a half three hour drive it's all interstate up there but yep no the whiskey scout's great he found that and i said get it whiskey scout and then i'd love if the whiskey scout i'd like to find a non-committee release of that because i love the dark cove and then we could do a little versus and see is there you know how much difference yeah. Well, and that comment come in earlier. Somebody was asking for a versus there between the seat, the crown, the committee release, Dark Cove, and the non-committee release. Genius. Yeah. Somebody, uh, if anybody out there even has the non-committee release and they're willing to give out a couple good samples, I would, I would love to do a versus on air just between our committee release bottle, which, by the way, we are going to do a full standalone review of that soon. But I would love to do a versus between committee release and the regular because, you know, what is the cost? The cost, I think somebody said a non-committee release was around one or was around 90. And the committee release is really hitting around roughly 150-ish, depending on where you can get it. Yeah, I think 130 to 170 in that range on the committee release was the prices that we saw. Um Real quick, Camo7357 asked if earthiness means it tastes like dirt. No. And I'd no. like, well, there's, it can. Uh, to me, there's different kinds. There's Sometimes I've gotten like a dry dirt, you know, uh, um, like a wind blowing and it whips dust or dirt up into your face. And sometimes it's like you're digging in a wet soil. Yes, that's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. It's like yeah, a huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when a, a uh, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, my grandparents had a farm in Iowa. And that Iowa soil is dark and rich. And I remember my grandfather would kind of go up and dig down a little bit and pull it up. And I don't know, I'm sure he could figure something out. But I mean, it was a rich, 
real rich soil. Not not like what we get here in Kansas as much, where we get a little bit more clay and stuff. It was dark and rich, so it's it's definitely that musky earthiness generally. Although it's not quite what I'm getting here. I don't get any musk, but I get that deeper, rich, earthy kind of flavor. And I am out, brother. I have uh, drained mine. Oh, really? I'd had about half of mine poured, and I just poured the other half in there, and I still got a pretty good sample left. Yeah, it is good. It's I was really letting mine kind of air and just a few sips here and there, but you must have uh, really been enjoying yours. Really enjoying it. So now, now it didn't wow me like the Dark Cove. This is quality. It's tasty. It's good. Um, but, boy, yeah, that – that Dark Cove committee release like grabbed me by my man bun. <laughs> okay, if you, I don't have a man if you bun. had a man bun, it would yeah. have grabbed you. If I had a man bun and was doing hot yoga, the Dark Cove committee release grabbed the man bun, flung me around until that top knot came loose, and then I fell to the floor and wanted more. All right, the Kelpie is good. And it's I, the cinnamon forward is the most interesting thing to me, which I know you're not getting. Um, but I do wish it had a little bit more of a uh, finish to it. That being said, still quality, still good. I'm just curious on the cost. This isn't something I'm necessarily going to run out and try to source, but I would buy a well, bottle if I came across it and the price was right. And Jerry, Jerry Bartlett asked, did I miss the price point on this? And I know at first Caskers had it, and I want to say it was 130, which puts it in the same range as the Dark Cove. And then George Kaplan replied that he thought the Kelpie was going to be ten dollars more, but I think they're roughly about the same price range. All right. Well, price-wise, I mean, I'm sure maybe it's on its limited edition. The Dark Cove is above for me, far and above the Kelpie release. That does not mean the Kelpie's bad. It's different. Um, so uh, I like it, uh, but for the Kelpie, I'm just going to say for me, if you were to ask me, is it worth it? I would be way more willing to pay 90 for it than I would 130. I would say it's worth it, but I don't, um, it's not at the top of my list to source right now. I agree. It's good. It wowed me not as much as the Dark Cove did or the Octomore 6.3. That is true too. Because that, uh, that Octomore 6.3 revived the Octomore line for me. Because I bought the 6.1 and was extremely underwhelmed. Which there's a great lesson in there. These, I mean, especially if we're talking, I mean, we're talking Ardbeg, we're talking Brooklady, but there are changes as these things shift. At least with the Octomore, the, uh, I still had 6.1 on hand and a lot of it. And we did a little live comparison versus like right on the show. And it, I mean, you can see how they're related, but 6-3 killed 6-1. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. So and it, was, it was really even on the nose, the first nosing of the 6.3. Yeah, it was amazing the difference. I mean, and that led to, that led to our New Year's Eve scramble our new year's eve tour de force where we were uh we were fighting the amateur drinkers <laughs> you know we're in there looking well for we didn't even realize we were like hey let's go hit a couple whiskey stores or a couple liquor stores real quick all right so we went across town once we got there and i saw how busy the lot was at the first store i was like oh crap it's new year's eve yeah well it's like you stepped into my world which is kind of like uh, you're clueless to everything else that's going around. You know, like, hey, why is the liquor store so busy? <laughs> What's going on? And then, <laughs> you know, and then you realize, uh, you realize when uh, when when the gal in front of you is buying like five bottles of Bacardi coconut rum, and they're screaming about woohoo, and she's wearing a lay, and you're like, what? Oh, it's New Year's Eve. She's getting ready to party. So, yeah. yeah. Although we uh, had a great New Year's Eve when you found the uh, when you found that Octomore six point three, and you kind of gave me a forearm shiver, <laughs> pushed you right out of the way. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they had two bottles, so we both right. Uh, Whiskey Wings asked, "Would you put this down as a bar purchase rather than a full bottle buy?" 
I would say if you bought this, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. No, you wouldn't be disappointed. Now, if you don't, if you're not leaning toward Ardbeg already, then try it at the bar before you buy a bottle. Um, Cause I'm not sure this, if you're, if you're not into the Pete's, I'm not sure this would win you over. Um, but, uh, but it's quality bottle. And if you see it, I would grab onto it. I just think I would be much more willing to buy it at $90 than I would at $130. All so, right, I got I to gotta interrupt you. Do it. Triple Cap, who provided this sample, yes. and he provided us the samples of the Ardbeg Dark Cove. Nice, man. Right. He just said, I'm quoting him, just, just ordered you a non-CR Dark Cove. We'll call back when back from we'll call when back from vacation. Woo. Walt, if you just ordered us a bottle of the crown or the dark cove non-committee release, thank you very much. Yeah. If you ordered a bottle and you're sending us samples, thank you very much. Right. Yeah, that's actually what I, I expect out of that. I could just I would just love a fat sample. Yeah. <laughs> fat. 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 P H A T fat. Now, if he's going to his like third house that's in Naples and he's traveling on his four hundred foot yacht, the bottle would be great. <laughs> now, I would like to say uh, we did. We both bought that. We did the live stream with the samples. Uh, we both bought bottles of the Dark Cove Committee release. You have opened your bottle. We have taken notes on it. Yes. We have not done our uh, independent review of it yet or our pre-recorded show of it yet. Right. Um, with the samples of the non-committee release, uh, are we going to throw them in there with that? You just want to do them side by side or, and do, or do a separate one after the standalone of the Dark Cove committee release? Are you talking to me or him? You. Oh, well, now I'm a little confused. We'll just do a versus. We'll do a yeah. versus between the committee release and the non, I mean, I, I think we go do our committee release Dark Cove show. Okay, then, that's what I was asking. Yeah, and then shor shortly thereafter, uh, you know, maybe. You're going to add, you're putting another show on our versus list. Oh, yeah. First of all, I think we need to up our versus greatly because I think that is a very valuable comparison. Hey, here's the committee release. Here's the same thing non-committee release. And if you and I come out and say, you know what, it feels a little peppier. It feels like it's got, you can tell the difference in the ABV, but otherwise you're not missing out at all. And you can't find the committee release anymore, but you can still get the non-committee release. That's valuable. That is, I mean, I, I want to know what that is. Um, Cause it, I, I'll admit, I mean, maybe it's their marketing, but their committee release, which is usually higher ABV, I definitely was seeking that out just because I didn't know if I was going to lose some quality with the non-committee release. So I think that is a very valuable versus. I think if we, like our, our uh, Ardbeg versus Lafroy, both 10-year versus, that's a valuable versus. And we've been getting just tons and tons of views on that. Uh, because I think when most people think of a peated Isla, those are the two big boys they think of. And, and I think some people are like, well, what's the difference? Sorry. Rambled. Yeah, that was a ramble. Yeah. I, didn't let you go. I was tasting mine again. I was reading some comments. Got a nice uh, forestry pine type clove there with mine. I think you're all out of yours, but I've still got a little bit of left, left of mine to sample. You know what? I've been cleansing with some water, and I even cleansed the glass. Um, I do want to go to a little bottle of wow. Oh, yeah, we so can't, you, know, can't do that. you can't do that after Ardbeg. Oh, I... uh, real quick, let's do talk about we do have some other samples we need to address at some point, and these came in from uh, Fletch U on YouTube, but he sent us samples of Rebel Yell 10-year single barrel and the Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style. Yeah, and then we also this week got samples from Jesse Voison of the Rymageddon single barrel 129 proof, which well, I, wanted to, I wanted to reach for that myself, but I wasn't sure if you had the time to actually do a full tasting of something else. You know, you have corrected me though. It may be wrong to go with the Elijah Craig. 
especially <laughs> especially when I got a log of wool and eight. There you go. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. That's a there good, you go. That's better. That's a good call. You you're yeah, good move on that one, brother. Thank you for stopping the madness. So we're gonna try a little bit of that log of wool and eight right up there. You know what I still got sitting here because I coveted it. That's my Octomore 6.3. Now I got my own whole bottle. So, thank uh, you. Triple Cap commented, it's our call. It's $110 for the bottle or the fat samples are free. We'll take the fat samples. No, we'll do the whole bottle. You want the bottle? There you yeah. go. We'll, we'll arrange that. I'll pay for that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We'll work that out. I just think one, I think a good versus having that bottle there will be a nice thing too. So I love that dark cove, man. I really, I can't imagine that, that, that'll be a, that'll be a bad choice. Probably not. No. So what? He's only got like a 200 foot yacht is what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a log of wool and eight. You guys know what this, we've had this before. A uh, comment straight from Amy Bart. She says, okay, so another versus. We've got board games and brown sugar. I only wish we knew something about Bart's wife. I'm trying not to even mention anything right there. <laughs> I'll just say this. Hola, Amy. <laughs> Uh, oh, and one other sample we got a while back that's still sitting here too, Bart, because uh, I just saw Sam Spears on here. We've got his Bal Balvenie Ton 1509 batch number three. Wow. Wow. Still sitting here, Sam. We need to get to those too sometime. I forgot about those sitting back there. Good thing I just saw you on there. You got both of them? Yeah. yeah. I, think you were, I think you were pulling a fast one. No, I mean, I only got one. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, what are you talking about? We got to split this one. Yeah, we got to split that one. I'm like, what? What do you, what, what do you, what, what of which you speak? All right, now so surely somebody's got your quote there. It's oh, a, yeah, we've gotten it. Uh, Claire was the first. And then um, I think there was a couple other. I know uh, Adventures in Whiskey pointed it out as well. So, And it is? That's from Christmas Vacation. And I think I've only watched that once, so I had no idea when I saw That's it. That's the neighbor when he puts the, he's taking the big, he goes down, it goes outside, he cuts down his tree in the yard because the other one went up in flames. And uh, the neighbor says, where are you going to put a tree that big, Griswold? He says, bend over, I'll show you. Oh, Lord. The neighbor says, you got some nerve talking to me that way, Griswold. He says, I wasn't talking to you. Referring to the neighbor's wife, Ju Julia oh, Lewis Dreyfus. Oh, Lordy. I'd forgotten all that. <laughs> I think I've only seen that once. And then when you first referenced it, I was thinking of European vacation. Uh, that's the worst one. Yeah. Yeah. I remember them getting stuck on a roundabout. And then I remember a German girl. Is all I kind of remember from that. Yeah. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. <laughs> uh, actually, Vegas vacation is probably the worst one. So, and the new vacation that they just come out with, I think it was last year, wasn't too bad with the whole new cast. Hmm. Or, well, it's it's, a, it's Griswold's boy. Um, what's his name? Is it the actual actor? I mean, the no. original actor coming no. back? No, because actually they use different kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's true. It's, uh, it's the Griswold boy, and he's grown up, and he's taking his family on a, on a road trip. Wow. Now, your shirt says, I have mixed drinks. Something about, about feelings. feelings. Got it. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, we're closing in. We said we we're going to keep this one a little shorter, a little tighter. Yep. And I've got a basketball game to go to here in about an hour. So I've got a mom coming over. My Bart's mom is coming over in about an hour and 10 minutes. So I think we've got a good run. Thanks, some of the folks. Let's go. Let's think real quick. Was there anything else we were going to bring up? You brought up the contest. We talked. We got the Black Arts 5.1 coming up. 
Uh, thanks to our Patreon supporters. We talked about that real quick. Uh, that black art is, uh, is, is from their, their, uh, their part. We've bought new webcams. Bart's using his for the first time. That's right. The Logitech coming in because our, uh, our built-in cameras just weren't quite cutting it. So uh, hopefully this is a little bit better visually. Yeah, Whiskey Throttle just joined us. He missed the beginning of our live broadcast because he was watching our rye shootouts. Oh, that's a good one. When we're competing with ourselves, that's good, brother. <laughs> well, then he missed out. So since the rye shootout, uh, Jesse Voison sent us samples of Rymageddon single barrel at 129 proof, and we uh, we'll uh, do a show of those. Oh yeah. These days. Last part of August, first part of September, I'm going to be down in Nashville, and I will be going to the Corsair Distillery. We're going to get a hold of something down there. If anybody knows anybody at the Corsair Distillery, let me know because I'm going to be reaching out to them. So let's see. Uh, you did. You were telling me that I should have had more board games and less whiskey in the background. Right. Yeah, that's what I said. Matter of fact, uh, he was like, "Get rid of, get rid of some of the whiskey bottles. Bring in that wall of board games you got." I said, "I see that board game right behind you. That should be bottles of whiskey sitting there." No, no, we're board games. Blah Harry blah Fratcher, blah. His Discworld, Onk, more pork, but this is a. Uh, this is a game done by Martin Wallace. That's a great story. Well, he's board game famous, baby. Can't wait to hear the end of that one. <laughs> uh, Malted in Montreal joined us. He's been in here. Uh, also, we, like I said, we talked about in two weeks, we got Bubba and the Beard on. Our next show after him, we're still working out the details, we'll be with Malted in Montreal. And we've got some others in the works after that that we're planning on. And really, we plan on those two weeks apart. I know I've got some basketball tournaments coming up with my boy. Yep. Um, so that may dictate a little bit on my end. Um, we'll try to schedule them out as far out as we can. So, yes. So, and, and we've got some, we made some more connections over in Scotland, uh, but we've got a few folks that have just said, you know what, we really can't. Uh, arrange it for a month or two. And I think I even had one that was three months out just because, uh, some of the brand ambassadors are on some pretty big travel schedules. So I think I think working it out sometimes gets to be difficult. But on that same note, if you guys have a favorite distillery and uh, you're able to drop them an email and tell them, hey, can you guys link up with the dummies, that would really help. When they hear it from their fans, uh, I think that greases the wheels a little bit. Because let's admit, some people – They've never heard of us. They'll, you know, Ardbeg or Brook Lottie, they'll go look at it and go, ah, you guys are a little goofy. We're not sure we want to go live with Goofy. And I was like, all right. They'll be like, look at this hat that dude's wearing. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, so first impressions, maybe maybe the hat's the wrong move. But you know what? I don't care. All right, anything else you want to say? Sam Spear says, if, if you designed a whiskey board game, then we could talk about it on the show. Ooh, yeah. They got some great – they got a viticulture board game, which is all on uh, making of wine and running a, uh, a vineyard, believe That's it or not. That's a great story, too. It's viticulture. It's phenomenal, dude. I got it. It's over on the big shelf. <laughs> You've seen my, my floor-to-ceiling uh, wall of board games. Do you remember how many I have? A bunch bunch is not even close i get a bunch of them sent from companies because i do board game reviews so they just show up at the door like it's like christmas every other week all right uh ardbeg kelpie <laughs> committee release uh, bottled at 51 i think it was 0.7 percent yes um it's good it's got 130 dollars. i think it's worth it i think if you bought it you wouldn't be disappointed uh, it's different than the Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release. Oh, yeah. It's not and it, not yes, and that's Bobby. what Adventures in Whiskey or Bobby Child said, apples and oranges between the two. Totally. Totally. So, so. Still yeah, good. I, still worth it. I love the experimentation. Keep doing that experimentation. I like that. So you know what we're going to do? What? We're going to scotch it, you scotch gods. Cilantro. Dummies. <laughs>